I think it's staggering. I think it's, it's alarming. Close calls like this happening too often. People just need to be aware, take a deep breath, and wait just a, a brief moment. But KXAN has learned many of the drivers cited each day didn't break the law. Who's making the call and why it may change how you respond to a ticket? A KXAN investigation starts right now. This is new video released by the Austin ISD. It shows a driver almost hitting a student who's crossing the street to get on board a school bus. Now it is a little difficult to see because the sun is shining into the camera, but here is the student running to get out of the way. And if you look closely, you can see the stop sign on the bus was out. Police say the driver should have stopped. On average, 15,000 drivers in Austin get violations in the mail for passing these stop signs. We also found out more than half of the people who fight it are winning. KXAN investigator Aaron Cargyle found out why. Unfortunately, it's not surprising. It's a very dangerous situation. Mike Rios has never seen this video before and says a close call like this is common. The former bus driver helps run Austin ISD's transportation department. He was here in 2016 when two students were hit in the same week and miraculously walked away. It's crazy. That's the same year Austin ISD added cameras to buses that capture license plates of drivers who ignore the stop signs. So far, more than 52,000 notices have been mailed. I think it's it's alarming and um, citizens need to be aware that this is a, a real problem we have here in Austin. You should also be aware last school year, more than 1,200 drivers who got hit with a hefty $300 fine fought it and more than half won. I realize that. I needed to contest it because I didn't agree with it. If you're like Jessica Fox and you don't agree. Do you swear from to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so happy God? I do. Right. This is the man you see. On the last full week of the month, 40 to 50 people show up each day to talk to Kevin Cole, an attorney hired as the administrative judge who hears every appeal. Based on what I see on this video, I'm going to find you not liable. Fox is hopeful he'll take one look at her violation and decide the stop sign wasn't out long enough enough for her to react. She's driving this black SUV. I can't believe an officer reviewed this and ticketed me for it. <laughs> Robert Salazar doesn't think he should have to pay $300 either. He was in the white truck and told Cole there wasn't enough time to stop. That type of evidence generally is not persuasive. Gary Bracken <laughs> is also eager to explain his side of the story. He owns this white truck but claims someone else was behind the wheel. If I'm uh, accused of something, I want to look somebody in the face and tell them that I did or did not do it. At each hearing, Cole views the video with the driver and checks a separate GPS system the district gives him access to. It just gives me more context. He's looking to see if the yellow flashing lights came on at the right time. I just want to make sure that the bus driver did what he or she was trained to do in terms of providing you notice. The other big deciding factor for Cole, when the sign stopped moving. If they've begun to pass within one second, we don't hold them liable. He says that's different than what Austin ISD police look for. When the police officers review the video, if it's a close call as to whether that stop arm had stopped moving, they tend to issue the citation and leave it up to me to make that call. No, that's an incorrect statement. Assistant Police Chief Chris Evoy does not view video clips himself, but spoke for his officers who do. We make the, the best decisions we can when it comes to approving these based on what we see. And when it comes to Cole's one second grace period. It doesn't sound like you guys have that same rule in place. I don't, I can't speak to that. Um, that is, that is a judge's um, that's our administrative judge's decision on that. Would it be possible for you to reduce the amount of the violation? On this day, not everyone won their appeal. I've found you liable. But the judge overturned at least four of the first six cases, including Fox's. I feel great. I saved myself $300. And Bracken's. Well, I feel like I've wasted a lot of time. But they do hope their outcomes encourage other drivers who question the officer's call to get a second opinion. I see why they go ahead and issue a ticket, because what's it to them? $300, maybe somebody won't fight it. We asked Evoy to watch and weigh in on several cases the judge threw out. I don't want to go back and forth 
with the officer's approval with the judge. But he took the information and said he'd have a lieutenant take a look. We can answer any questions um, offline. And AISD did email me back later to tell me Chief Evoy reviewed that footage and, quote, sees that there are factors he would have considered when issuing the citation, but saw how the officer determined it was a violation. Clearly, the judge disagreed. I think the biggest takeaway here is if you get a ticket in the mail and it's a close call, it's worth it to appeal. It could save you 300 bucks. And if you don't like the judge's decision, the final step is to appeal to the superintendent. And Aaron, the district has always said this program is about changing driver behavior. Is it doing that? Unfortunately, guys, the violation numbers are not going down. Take a look at this. Since the program started in February of 2016, there have been at least 12,000 violations a year. And in the first half of this year, more than 7,000 violations had already been mailed. It's bringing in a lot of money. Austin ISD has made about $4 million in revenue, money that goes into the general fund. For every $300 violation, Austin ISD gets 40% and the vendor gets 60%.